Um, Africa House uh, is an umbrella organization that represents uh, several African communities. It's uh, over 28 different African communities. And uh, um, uh, the aim of the mission of Africa House is to help uh, African immigrant and refugee who, has, who are coming to Oregon or to Poland to be uh, self-sufficient. So we help them um, from employment to uh, emergency assistance to uh, organizing the community so that we can have a, a strong uh, community that will advocate for itself. Most of, uh, especially dealing with African refugees, most of those African refugees are coming from a rural area. Uh, some of them have zero urban living experience and some are uh, uh, illiterate even in their own language. So when they come here, they don't understand, you know, um, the, uh, uh, all the paperwork with uh, a rental agreement and all this. So it's create a uh, uh, conflict between uh, the renter and the landlord because they did not understand what they signed. Sometimes they sign a lease for one year or two years. But since uh, they came here, they're looking for affordable housing. When they found, you know, affordable housing, Section 8 or subsidized housing, they don't respect, they don't wait till the end of uh, their lease to move. So uh, they move at any time that there is uh, affordable housing somewhere. It doesn't have to be in Poland. Uh, now we have so many refugees in Marion County, Woodburn, Salem, uh, Silverton, and all those. So they, uh, once they leave without uh, uh, reaching the term of the lease, so it's create problem, they either take them to court and all those. So those are the problems that we are facing. And also, most of them don't understand their right as a renter. So Africa House has to step in all the time to intervene so that they can, you know, uh, have their right respected by the landlord. So some of the issues uh, like uh, this, if the house is, uh, if the apartment has a mold, uh, apartment uh, needs some repair and all those, they, they have a language barrier and they don't understand the rights, so they don't even seek uh, help from the landlord. So uh, some of those families are uh, living in a very unsafe house or apartment with mold, with all kind of uh, toxic, you know. But uh, uh, that's why we have a program uh, at uh, Africa House that educate uh, those uh, renters on their right and safe housing and we also sometimes go and check uh, their apartment if there is no mold and if there is a mold who is responsible to fix it. We make sure that uh, the heating system is working, we make sure that everything is working in the apartment, they have a safe window, the children are safe and all those. And uh, um, because of the language barrier and because uh, of uh, um, not used to you know renting and all those we have to be the intermediary between the, the renter and the landlord yes uh, most especially most of the refugee who are coming here they have a, they receive a food stamp so we make sure that uh, this food stamp is used to eat uh, healthy food and also we make sure that we link them to other places where they can get uh, 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 healthy food at a village garden or any other, you know, farmer market where they can go and then get uh, 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 healthy food. Um, but uh, other than that, uh, they all, uh, all the refugees who are coming here, they have a food stamp, they have access to food. We also connect them with uh, their ethnic store. If uh, they are looking for ethnic food, we uh, help them to connect so that they can go get the ethnic food. Actually, in Southeast, uh, there is a, uh, we refer them to, uh, there is a, uh, a place on Gleason and 162nd. They sell um, uh, vegetables there, we, we refer people there. And we also have a lot of uh, ethnic store in Southeast, so, uh, Food-wise, is uh, very accessible in South Southeast. Uh, most of refugees who are coming here, they have organ health plan, and uh, uh, in Southeast, they have uh, access. Uh, ev all the African uh, refugees living in Southeast, they know where to go. Uh, they go to Mid County Clinic on Division 127. Everybody knows, and then also we have uh, uh, several, you know. Um, 
dental clinics such as uh, Willamette uh, Dental, uh, so they have uh, access to this. Uh, we have also uh, Providence, you know, here in Gateway area where they can uh, access to. So when they come here, we give them orientation and workshop on accessing and navigating the healthcare system. And then if they have a, a problem accessing those healthcare system, they should call Africa House and we'll be the intermediary to help them access those. So what we do is to empower them uh, so that they can do it on their own, take their children to uh, a hospital, to clinic. And for those who don't have um, organ health plan, who don't have medical uh, uh, care, medical uh, insurance, we also work with uh, uh, free clinics like a Wallace Clinic and uh, also sometimes Providence also help. We partner with Providence. We refer our senior who do not have uh, income or do not have health care to go to Providence in order to get uh, uh, help. We also refer um, some of those uh, women to uh, the county clinics so that they can go get uh, uh, help with, uh, with their medical issues. Transportation, um, uh, Southeast uh, Poland is very accessible to public transportation. Uh, the only uh, sometimes we problem we face with transportation is when we find a job to those refugees in an area where uh, it's hard to get the public transportation like uh, uh, far north Poland. So if they live in Southeast, they have to go to work in uh, north Poland, uh, then sometimes they uh, struggle. Uh, to find the transportation. But other than that, all the refugees who live in Southeast Poland, they have access to public transportation. Uh, and all they all live in an uh, area where uh, there is either bus accessible or uh, max accessible. Yeah, one of the things that need to be done in other our community, you know, to access uh, all those uh, resources is that uh, education because we have to uh, know about those uh, resources and then we provide information to the community. And uh, information most of the time uh, is, um, again, as I said earlier, some of those community has a uh, community member have a language barrier. So we provide information sessions at uh, Africa House about uh, access to all the resources and also access to employment, where to go uh, seek employment. Uh, most of the time, uh, refugees, when they come here, we refer them to IRCO for employment service. But for those who are not eligible for IRCO program, then we refer them to other program uh, like One Stop uh, uh, Employment Service or uh, 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 temporary, you know, employment services uh, agencies and all those to get uh, employment. And also we work with different community uh, based uh, businesses to help those people. And we connect with churches, with different churches with uh, any other businesses to help those people to find employment. This, this way we can reduce you know, um, the disparity that exists between uh, the African and uh, other community or the mainstream community. But the most important thing is we need to have uh, information on those existing resources so that we can uh, empower people to access and navigate those resources. Um, that uh, we need to work with uh, organizations such as uh, the one you're talking about uh, to uh, reach out to Africa House and also give um, information to Africa House and uh, Africa House has to distribute, disseminate this information to the community because without uh, having information it will be hard for our community to access those services. If we at Africa House, we don't know about the existence of those services then it's hard for us to tell people where to access healthcare, where to access uh, public transportation, where to access uh, uh, free housing or, or, or employment, or, or even uh, education such as uh, free ESL and all those. So uh, we need to start uh, working together, sharing information and attending a, a meeting and also Another thing we're doing at Africa House is we are educating, empowering uh, leaders, uh, community leaders from different African community that participate in African uh, leadership advocacy. It's a cohort group where we train people to be able to uh, access information and take this information back to the community so that they spread this information and then at the same time 
they provide this information to their base and then empower their base so that their base can do on their own instead of uh, asking for, uh, waiting for Africa House or IRCO or any other agency to come in and uh, help them navigate the system. So uh, the next step is how we can work together with all those organizations who are uh, working hard to reduce disparity and, and promote uh, equity you know, in, uh, in Poland metro area. Uh, we also, as an African newly uh, arrived immigrant and refugee community, we want to access those services uh, so that we can uh, reduce uh, the disparity that exists among the African uh, population and the mainstream. Uh, we want to be included whatever is happening in the neighborhood. We want to be included in neighborhood association. We want to participate as a, as a, as a, as a citizen, as a, a member of the community. Whatever is happening in the community, we want to contribute, we want to participate. Uh, for so long we've been uh, left uh, aside. Uh, one of the reasons is that uh, many uh, African refugees who are coming here have a language barrier, so they don't know what's happening in the neighborhood. So now we are empowering people that to step in, say hi to your neighbor, what's going in the neighborhood, and uh, what's happening in uh, the schools uh, uh, in the neighborhood. So uh, we want you know, people to come out uh, and then if uh, something is happening in the neighborhood, we want those neighborhood association to reach out to, uh, to us, uh, Africa House, and then we will be able to uh, disseminate the information to all the African living in uh, different neighborhoods so that they can go and participate like anybody else in the development uh, of the neighborhood because uh, whatever happening in the neighborhoods is not just for one group, it's for all, so we want to be part of it too and how we can bring our contribution. Yes, uh, most of the, uh, again, uh, most African refugees are coming from a uh, war-torn country. Uh, some of them have lived for so long in refugee camp, they come here already traumatized. They came here with uh, post-traumatic disorder and all the, and then, uh, they are so scared that uh, in some area when their children get involved in, uh, in, uh, in uh, gang-related activity or any other problem, it is scary because when they hear about the shooting in the neighborhood or, uh, or uh, uh, something bad happened in the neighborhood, they're so scared. So uh, one of the things we are doing now is we got a small funding from the city of Poland to educate uh, the African community and the African youth on uh, gang uh, prevention. So we work with uh, Poland, you know, police uh, about on gang prevention. We bring kids, we talk to them, we bring parents to talk to, to them about uh, bad behavior and what they see in the community. They should let us know. If they don't want to let police know, then they should let Africa House know and how we can try to solve those problems. If their children is behaving bad, we have a program here that help those kids to uh, be positive at the school, to be respectful to uh, law enforcement, to maintain their culture, their heritage, and also to be a, a, a contributing mem member of the community. So we want to create a, a safe environment for those families. So uh, we work with uh, a neighborhood association, with uh, different uh, police precincts, with uh, gang enforcement ta uh, task to and also with uh, uh, community based their own community based organization to make sure that everything is okay and if there is a problem they should let us know as soon as possible so that we can step in and resolve the problem we are educating those african community leaders on domestic violence uh, since so many of those refugees are coming here with already uh, traumatized they came with post traumatic disorder uh, just a little bit of stress is trigger those uh, those things. So we are educating people, empower people to, if there is a problem, to let us know, and then we seek help. You know, either a mental health uh, 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 assistance or any counseling or therapy that can help them reduce, you know, this uh, tension, the stress, and the depression, and also reduce all the stressors by empowering people, helping people to find a job, helping people, you know, uh, helping their children with uh, after-school program, with the homework, with anything that is
creating all those uh, uh, problems. Yeah, again, uh, African community is, uh, most of the African community coming here is um, um, oral based community. And even in Africa, uh, we like storytelling. That's where uh, you express yourself. And so many people, you know, come, they have a story, they have things to say, but they, didn't have, they don't have opportunity to tell their story. So this is an opportunity for people, you know, to tell their story, and also uh, the, it's an opportunity for the public to know about who is in the neighborhood and what kind of a story or problem they're coming with or what kind of problem or issue they're facing uh, in right now once they're here. So again, uh, storytelling is very well encouraged in the African community. And this is uh, the way traditionally we uh, uh, take information out to the public and then also to the public to know uh, about the existing issue and how you know to come up with uh, with a solution with, or with uh, attempting to resolve those problems. Again, storytelling uh, uh, traditionally is the, the only way to communicate you know between uh, the younger generation and the older generation, all uh, between whoever telling the story and the public. And uh, we encourage, you know, this kind of, uh, uh, this kind of thing, the storytelling, to, to see more. We have people in the community that really want to, uh, uh, want the public to know about their story. Uh, some of them don't speak English, but through interpreter, they are willing to tell their story and their experience living in uh, the neighborhood. Yeah, Africa House is here to advocate for the African community, and we, our door is open for anybody who uh, want to help us uh, access uh, services, want to share information with us, information that will allow us to empower our community member so that they can uh, be able to navigate the system to access housing, employment, uh, healthcare, or any resources out there that will help them, you know, be self-sufficient and also reduce uh, disparity. Uh, we are advocating for uh, equity. We uh, want that uh, anybody out there that can help us, please, um, we are open. And we represent the entire 28 to 32 African communities. And once we get the information, the information will go down to the community to empower them so that they can navigate uh, the system. We don't get uh, a spotlight uh, like this. Uh, so this is an opportunity for us to tell our story. And we want more of this kind of opportunity so that we can tell our story so that public will know about our issue, about the problem that we are facing. We come up with, after three years of research, we come up with African report where it tells about African community here in Oregon and especially here in Poland and uh, what are the issues we are facing, what are the problems, and how we are struggling to uh, reduce disparity and also to uh, participate in uh, equity in the neighborhood. So if anybody wants to know more about the African community, we have the report out there. They can stop by. If we have a copy, we will give them or we will provide them with a link to access this report so that they can know more about uh, the African community. And again, I take this opportunity to thank you so much for um, uh, reaching out to us uh, and helping us uh, tell our story so that people, uh, our neighbors, our uh, community, the public know that uh, who is next uh, to them, who is their neighbor. So we are here, we are not going anywhere. Uh, so we want to contribute, we want to participate. If there is something going there, people should reach out to us and we are ready to participate 100% in, in the development of our neighborhood. Uh, thank you so much.